What's up, you beautiful viewers? My name is Kevin Boudreau, aka Woke One. Now, in my last video, I went over a color pencil tutorial on how I did my drawings. This was the sketch that I used. So today, as promised, I'm going to put this sketch into my iPad. I'm going to photograph it, drop it in my iPad, and then we're going to go through a little Procreate tutorial on the iPad Pro on how I'm going to give this a background and environment. Yeah, so let's get to it. So the first thing I've done is imported my sketch into my iPad Pro. Here on the left side of the screen, I'm going to give you guys a demo of exactly what's going on while the right side of the screen is going to play a time lapse of everything. So if you're not sure how to import, you just click this little tool here, you hit add, you go to insert photo, and then you can bring it in with your photos. Now from there, you would lower your opacity. That would be here in the first layer. So I don't have anything in here, but I'm going to click here to make a random shape which is going to be a circle. Now, the great thing about Procreate and the iPad Pro is if you hold, it will make, well, that's an oval, but if you use two fingers, it auto corrects to a circle. The other thing is if you do a line, it will auto correct to a straight line. Two fingers erases, three fingers brings back. The pen that I use to do all of my line work is under inking. It is called the technical pen. I did all of my line work for this piece with this. And the other uh, tool that I like to use is under airbrush. I like the hard airbrush. I feel like I can get a lot of um, good blends with it. And you could set the opacity here. So you got your opacity and your line weight. So once everything is lined out, you can then um, pick a background color, which is gonna be right under here background color you can click and drag and we'll pick this color if you want to change the color of the line which I did in my drawing you just click on that layer go over here to hue saturation brightness and you can just drag and try different colors so we will keep it right there I like that color so we're gonna use that so you can see on the right side of the screen I've added in some clouds for background and I'm about to start adding in some water and to do that, I'm basically just using the airbrush tool. I'm creating other layers. I'm making sure that my line drawing layer is on top and all the other layers are below. Now, I just want to show you really quick and easily how I'm creating the water. I'm basically making sure I'm in this layer that's underneath my line drawing and I am going to click a random color. We'll go with the water color and I have my hard airbrush selected. I'm drawing a line across making sure that this shape is closed, clicking and dragging. Now, one of the things that I wanna make sure I go over is alpha lock. And that is from clicking this box here, you can see it says alpha lock. This is gonna lock that layer, so I'll lighten it up. I'll click here and you'll see that anything I do stays within that area. It does not go outside of the shape. So alpha lock is definitely a helpful tool for the background. So that background was pretty much just created by me just doing this back and forth until it got a rough kind of shape to it. So I obviously picked um, water because this is a pirate. He discovered treasure. I'm assuming he's on an island. And in the background, I'm thinking about adding these cliffs that I'm putting in. And to do that, I'm creating another layer, but I want it behind the water. So I'm going to hold it and put it behind the water. I'm going to pick another different color like that. And I'm just gonna create a random shape for the background. And you can click and drag, color in that spot. So from there, what I'm gonna do is again, hit alpha lock. And I can just do some random shading in that area to create little tones to get the rough idea across. You can see here, I've also added some sand. So I'm going to go ahead and make another layer here above all of these layers and just make a little diagonal area where the sand would be click and drag that in but what i want to go over is blurring out the background and to do that you would click your layer and i want to go to gaussian blur right here and you can see it says zero percent but when you drag along it blurs the background out actually here's an important detail make sure you hit unclick alpha lock because if alpha lock's on, it will keep that shape. Without alpha lock, you can go back to Gaussian Blur and drag it and you can see it's got that blurry background. Now, I didn't want mine too blurred, but just blurred enough where the foreground image is going to pop out. 
Next, you could see I added little details to the sand, little speckles. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna create a new layer above the sand. I don't wanna do it in the sand layer because I like the gradient that I created, but I'm gonna pick a darker color and I just pretty much added little speckles like this, here and there, different sizes, some rocks, you know, just things that you would see at the beach because those details are important. Now, it looks very um, distracting because they're so opaque. So if you go there, you can lower the opacity and now it just kind of works a little better in my opinion. I know this is roughly done, but you can see on the right side, it is effective. So instead of doing it in the same layer, it's always nice to do details on another layer. And the next thing that I'm gonna have to do is place some shadows. And I'm keeping in mind that the light was coming from the upper left down towards the bottom right. So shadows will be cast to the right hand side. Um, that's how I had it in the sketch. So I'm going to do the same thing. And I can do this in the sand layer or a separate layer. So I'll go right above the sand layer and I'm gonna select that color, make it a little darker. Again, with the airbrush tool still, I am just, we'll use this object. This will be our character. So there would just be a little shadow off of that. So at this point, I am satisfied with my background enough to go into the character. The background does get more detailed later, but at this point, we're gonna focus on the character, which is my circle here. So keeping that in mind, I am going to make sure that the circle is closed. I'm going to enlarge the line work that I have here. And basically that is what I did on the right side was you could see that I was retracing things and clicking and dragging so that I have separate shapes. So for instance, there's a hat on the character that I was working on. So I can go ahead and make a hat if I wanted. I'll use this gray tone. So we'll just say that this is the hat. So everything is now stuck within those layers. It's just like the drawing, right? Awesome. <laughs> so, like I said, alpha lock. I am now able to apply the alpha lock to both of these and I worked on the hat first. So I'll just show you guys with the hard airbrush just a quick blend because the light is coming from this side, meaning that this side would be slightly darker. So we'll do that. And same thing with the character. I'll pick up this color. I am in that layer. And because it's a sphere, we want to show some curvature. So I am shading this top left side like so, and I'm going to get a little lighter. So you could really see where the light is hitting. We'll go ahead and put a little shine, why not? Now, the other thing is you wanna think about your shadows and this hat, which is on top, would be casting a shadow. So I'm gonna pick up this darker color again, make it a little darker, and go ahead and do a little shadow cast from that hat. I know this looks ridiculous, but I'm just kind of showing you guys what's going on. So the next tool that I want to talk to you guys about is Clipping Mask. So if you go to your layer, um, let's just, you know what? What I'm going to do is create little eyes really quickly for the character. So let's just put two little eyes there. Okay, so we got the eyes. That is in a separate layer. Now, if I wanted to add to this layer, I could just do alpha lock like I have been doing. I can create the gradient so that we can see that there is a little gradient in there. Now, if I wanted to add pupils and iris, all that kind of stuff to detail it, but I'm worried about you know if I like it or not or ruining the gradient, that's where clipping mask comes in handy because I can make a new layer and when I hit clipping mask, everything that I do above this that I hit clipping mask for is locked to this layer here. So that means that if I pick a color like green, I can draw within this area, but I cannot go outside of it, which is similar to alpha lock, but it's on a separate layer that is clipped to that layer. So from here, we'll do little tiny irises looking kind of goofy 
and you know what we will do alpha lock on that so that I can't go outside of that layer and I am going to go ahead and color those in and now it needs some pupils so I'm gonna make sure that I hit clipping mask again and now there are the pupils and I'm gonna make another layer to add some shines now this is something that I do go this is something I add to all my drawings is these little shines but what looks really cool is when you lower the opacity because then there's a little bit of transparency to them so another thing that I thought was kind of fun to add was a little bit of a glow off of the gold that reflected onto the character itself so in order to do that the first thing that I'm gonna do is just map in a little piece of gold that's right here We'll do a couple pieces like so. And then I'm going to alpha lock that. Get a little brighter. Again, I'm doing this so quickly, so I do apologize for how rough this looks. Now I want to line those, so I'm going to hit inking technical pen. That is my choice of pen for lining. I'm going to line these very quickly, like so. And to create a glow, I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm gonna make sure that this is a super bright yellow I'm going to go back to my airbrush tool and I am just going to dust around it like so. So there's kind of this glow, but you'd also see it on the character. So right under here, because there is a round spherical, sphere, spherical, sphere shape, <laughs> whatever. You would see it bouncing off. That is bounce light slash reflective light, I guess. I'm, I'm not really sure. But point is, you would see it a little bit on the character if it was that shiny and reflective. So from there, you can also lower the opacity a little bit to just make it a little more believable. So that's what I did. Now at this point where I have everything roughly where I want, I'm going to create a new layer on top of all of the layers. And I'm going to go back to my inking pen, the technical pen, I should say. And in that layer, I am going to start doing some line work to define certain areas and break it off of the background. Now, I know you could technically use your initial line work. I reline things in color because it's just a style choice. So what I do is grab a darker color like that and, um, I would start mapping in like so the line work here and I tend to like the colored line work instead of black line work just because I, I don't know it's a style choice I just like the way it looks when it's all said and done and I am definitely making this more of a cowboy hat because this little character deserves to be a cowboy so anyways, I would reline everything like so. Go ahead and do that there. Again, doing this very, very quickly for you. And then the character, same, same thing. Going to line right around the character. And if you want the line work a little darker, go right to brightness. Perfect. Oh. Should cut this back a little. Okay, so you can see now that this is lined, this is a focal point, and it bounces off the background more. That is why I do that. And I just want to go ahead and show you guys again without the line work. That is what it looks like with the line work. You can see it's a little more defined.
So the last tool I want to talk to you guys about is the add tool. And I use this for my lighting, but in order to use that tool, I am going to merge these layers together. And to do that, I'm just going to hold and pinch so that they are all one layer now. And uh, that is the character layer. So I'll make a new layer above that. And I'm going to hit clipping mask so that everything is locked on the layer below. And I'll hit the end there and go to add. And now I'm going to make sure that I have my airbrush and I'm going to pick a nice color like this coming from the sun. And I'm going to apply that to the left side here and there. So I want to make sure you could see it's, it's almost like there's a little bit of sunlight that's just being added to the character on this side. That might be a little too crazy, but I'm just showing you guys as an example. You could actually tone that down. And then the other thing I'll do is I'll make a new layer, clipping mask to that layer. I'm gonna click here and select a cooler tone like this blue. And I'm gonna apply it to the right side like so. And now I have kind of like, um, almost like a bounce light that's reflecting from the water here. And I feel like that just adds a little bit of uh, lighting to my character to bump it up a notch. And if it's too harsh, which I think it is, you can lower the opacity to make it blend in a little bit more. And I'll do that for both layers so that it's a little more subtle, but I find it helpful. Towards the end here, I thought that this background could use a little bit more to tell the story. So I added a palm tree, a little piece of driftwood, and an X because X marks the spot. Now I did not use any reference for this picture. This was strictly from my imagination. There's nothing wrong with reference, um, especially if there's something that appealed to you like a destination, maybe a vacation place that you went to, but you wanna make sure that you're using the background to help tell the story. So adding these little details to just kinda you know, help the viewer understand what they're looking at is definitely a helpful tool. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. And as a special surprise, I got prints made. Now these are 11 by 14 inches. They are available on my website, kbuart.com, as well as a bunch of other merch. I've got stickers, pins, original artwork, more prints. I've got t-shirts, hoodies. So be sure to check it out. Maybe get yourself something. And if you guys did learn something, I don't, I don't get paid by you guys for this. This is just information I'm giving out. So you, you kind of have to go buy one of these. I ship worldwide. So check the website out. And uh, if you guys are looking forward to more murals, graffiti, stuff like that, tune in next week because I have a mural coming out for a coffee shop that I recently painted. So stay tuned. I'll catch you then.